All right, fans, it's 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time here in the Midwest, 7 o'clock Eastern. Hopefully you can hear us well. We are, surprise, surprise, having some audio challenges. There might be a little bit of an echo here. We apologize. But we are live on Facebook for Feedback Friday Live. Damian Nelson coming here for the PWR Studios. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear from your comments, questions, concerns about professional wrestling, our recent episodes, or anything in general. So, again, thank you for joining us. If you haven't already, feel free to like us on Facebook right there uh, to, with the, uh, the link that you see on the screen. So, share your comments here on this live feed. We'll be sharing with you some of the comments we've gotten over some of our most recent episodes here in this broadcast. We'll also be taking your live questions and comments. So, let's get right down to it and get to some of our previously submitted comments here on Feedback Friday. Firstly, this comes to us reference my comments the other day on The Miz being a top guy, a main eventer, a number one star in professional wrestling, and being today's Ric Flair. So with that, I'll get to this comment, which was brought to us by Shane Wareham, who says this, and I quote, The Miz is a multiple-time intercontinental champion. He's a mid-carter for life. He's not a top star. He was world champion once and it flopped, which is why he never came close to the title again. Remember, Damien doesn't, maybe Damien doesn't remember Ric Flair in his prime or he's comparing Miz to the Flair of the mid 2000s. The Miz is great and the fans are starting to appreciate him more, myself included, but by no means is he anything like Ric Flair. If he's the closest thing to it, that's very sad. Let me make a couple of points to that point. Shane, and thank you for those comments. I'm comparing Ric Flair of the 80s to The Miz of today in overall presentation. It's a different time for wrestling. There will never be another Ric Flair. So that's why he's not the new Ric Flair. He's today's Ric Flair, if you will. There will never be another 16-time world champion. Because the world championship is around the waist of a part-time star. So things are different right now. So presentation, not in-ring ability. Overall presentation. I stand by my statement that The Miz is today's Ric Flair. And I don't think defending your title successfully against John Cena at WrestleMania makes your championship a flop. Just saying. Shane goes on to say that uh, giving Miz the figure four was a way to try to get Miz over as a baby face, and it failed. Perhaps you're right to a degree in that regard, but more on the granting, the wishing, if you will, of the figure four later on in this broadcast. Continuing along with those comments, let's get to our next one here, which comes to us from a user by the name of 80s Classic. That's his username. And this is regarding that figure four. He says, uh, John Cena, Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow, Bailey, along with The Miz, were allowed to do the figure four in the WWE, and a list of TNA wrestlers as well. Once Flair left the company, they were also granted permission to use the figure four. You're wrong, uh, 80s classic. One man was gifted the rights, the, 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 the blessing, if you will, to do the figure four, and that was The Miz from Ric Flair himself in WWE. You're right, others have used it, but none of them were given the blessing to use it. From Ric Flair, The Miz was the only person to achieve that goal. Next comes from Mike Chadwick, who says the following, The Miz is an awesome guy. He just works hard at his craft. In my opinion, I love every time he says, When my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. He's got ill promo skills. Mike Chadwick seemingly agreeing with me there as it pertains to The Miz. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, next comment comes to us from a user by the name of BlackRock316. He says, I enjoy The Miz whenever he is on TV. I do wonder, however, if WWE is ever going to give him another title run for either the Universal or World Championship on SmackDown. And uh, we will, uh, well... I think there's a chance here. I know some people laugh and say it's not possible, but I think there's a chance here that uh, he is going to end up against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. I mean, is it really that far-fetched? Is it really that far-fetched? Now, a lot of people are, 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 are dismissing that possibility because of the rumors they've read about it being a lock that it's going to be Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. I'm not necessarily saying that that's not true. 
But what if that is not true? And what if somebody else gets a chance? And what if The Miz, who, by the way, has a brand new TV show coming to the USA Network, what if The Miz were that guy to take on Brock Lesnar? Who could talk themselves up and be more possibly believable while being unbelievable to be an opponent for Brock Lesnar than The Miz? He's got the confidence. He has in-ring ability to make a match out of it. And it would be a match where he would make sure that all those tens of thousands of people in the millions watching on pay-per-view would want to see him get his ass beat. That's what it's about, folks. So uh, let's get to another comment here. This one came to us on Facebook, actually. This was from a Christopher Perry, who said uh, that he thought The Miz was a modern-day Ric Flair when he was WWE champion. Uh, he was hoping at the time that Alex Riley would be his double A, his Arn Anderson, if you will. Uh, you, you, yeah, you know, he, The Miz has been consistent. He's been consistent, and he's gotten that much better. Once he came back and was prepared with Maurice, things became very different for The Miz. There was a, 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 a more, more, more stated presence, I would say, that The Miz had at that time that really elevated him, elevated him to the spot that I am putting him in right now as a top star and as today's Ric Flair. So thank you for that comment, Christopher Perry. And next we come to a comment from, uh, actually, that one we have uh, seen already. We've got some duplicates in here. Uh, so we do appreciate those comments. And a lot of those comments coming to us on our YouTube channel. As you know, we are live, not live, but we bring you a new episode of Pro Wrestling Report on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. PWR tonight, where we digest the day's wrestling news in 15 minutes or less and uh, share with you what is going on in the wrestling world, along with my daily perspective piece on what it is that I'd like to get more in depth with and talk to you about as it pertains to the world of professional wrestling. So, um, want to uh, thank all of you for those comments on our YouTube channel. We're also, of course, on Twitter, at PWR Show on Twitter. That's at PWR Show on Twitter, and right here on Facebook, where we are live right now, Facebook dot com slash PWR show Facebook.com slash PWR show. Also folks I want to remind you that we are going to be coming to New Orleans, Louisiana, New Orleans, the big easy. Some call it the big sleazy for our big shenanigans balcony party. That's going to be featuring Kevin Nash, hosted by So Calvell, and with other wrestling stars appearing as well. All your all your tickets come with all your drinks all night, unlimited drinks, open bar all night long. Tickets are available now at pwrshow.com. The tickets are currently 10% off as well at pwrshow.com. That's a limited time offer. Tickets 10% off. Two problems you want to avoid. Firstly, having to pay full price for tickets. And secondly, not being able to get tickets at all because this event has sold out each of the last several years well in advance of the event. And we have had people waiting outside at the door for space to get into the party. Don't let that be you. Be a part of the only official WrestleMania uh, related wrestling event on Bourbon Street on Friday, April 6th. After the Hall of Fame, after Impact Wrestling, after WrestleCon, there ain't nothing in the way, y'all, of coming to Ain't No Party like a Bourbon Street party at the Bourbon Cowboy uh, um, for for the, the big show uh, there. So I want to thank all of you for uh, participating in tonight's episode and joining us here live. I want to spread the word. We're going to be uh, working with this uh, format here for the next several weeks and giving you guys a chance to interact with us live and to share your questions, your comments with us live as well. We've got several of you watching right now, including Alfonso Quintero, Matthew Inocenti. Matthew, hello. It's been a while since we've seen you uh, in the Milwaukee area there. Thanks for tuning in here on Facebook Live along with the many others that are doing so. And uh, we want to make sure that you all know that we will make sure we continue with our commitment to being your most interactive wrestling outlet, and we give you a chance, your voice gets a chance to be heard, not only on Feedback Friday here on Facebook Live, but also on our live pay-per-view, our post-pay-per-view uh, broadcast over on Blog Talk Radio with Meathead and Matthew Thomas. After each WWE pay-per-view event, we are live, and we get you, give you a chance to give us a call in, and you can take those episodes with you on the go as well as they are all available in podcast format on the Pro Wrestling Report podcast. So, with that, we're out of time here, folks. Our 10 minutes are up. Yes, this was only going to be a 10-minute episode again. We are letting you convince us that this is the way you want to get the show. 
So comment on it if you're watching after the fact. If you weren't able to join us live, let us know what it is you want to see here on Feedback Friday live on Facebook. And we will be back with you again Monday night on President's Day. The brand new episode of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. And we've got Be the Booker for the Elimination Chamber. I can't wait to see what David Hero has in store to book that seven-man Elimination Chamber match. That coming Monday live. Not live. This is live. Monday on a new episode of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here on Feedback Friday. Keep those comments rolling in and have a tremendous week.